Hi everyone. Eileen here with video tutorial number two for you for this weekend. And this is my Lavinia Stamps video tutorial from me to you. And this is the card that I'd like to share with you. I'm using craft card as a card base, which I don't often do, but I think it looks rather nice with this card. And oxide inks. Stamps I'll tell you about as we go along. So let's get cracking. I have a piece of Lavinia Stamps Multifarious Cardstock in Cream. Oh, oh just trying to make myself comfortable. This chair's a bit high up. Um, and uh, where was I? Oh, yes, Multifarious Cardstock in Cream. And the size of the cardstock that I'm using, the topper, is six and a half centimetres by 18 centimetres. Now, you could obviously get a large piece of card and you could make a sort of a master board of this background and cut it up. But I'm going with the size that I'm using today. And I'm starting off with Distress Oxide's Tumble Glass. And then I'll be going to use Crack Pistachio. Along with, to finish off the background, a normal Distress Ink in... I spiced marmalade. So starting off with the tumbled glass, just squashing some down on my mat, and then a few squirts of water so it beads, and then taking the topper, just dip dab dobbing it through to pick up the colour. Down on my mat, wipe this off for the moment and then need to dry it now oxide inks are opaque and you can't see through them through the layers of of ink unless you heat set in between the layers of color uh, if you didn't heat set then you will find that the colors would all mingle you wouldn't be able to see through the layers and you'd more or less i think you'd you'd see a muddy depending on what colors you use you're more likely to get mud. So need to heat set. Before I add layer number two. should do. The next colour I'm using is Crack Pistachio. Again, it's still oxide inks. Put some down. Water and then down onto the cardstock. And I've picked up another nice layer of colour. And back to the heat gun. I'm holding up the cardstock because the heat goes through it and it will dry faster as well as burning my fingers but don't worry I'm in terrible pain but I'll do anything for you. it drip and drop down. I hope that I'm not out of shot. Okay, now I'm going back to the blue and another squash down on the mat. I better move over a bit so that you can see. And a bit more just monitoring that you can see, okay. And then 
bit more of the blue colour. And the hair dryer, the hair dryer. The uh, heat gun is back. That's because it looks like a hair dryer. Move these over a bit. The heat gun is back and So that's another layer. Now I'm going to move on. You can add as many layers as you like until you're really happy with the look that you've got. And now I'm moving on to, um, well, actually, I better fill that gap in. Sorry, changed my mind. I'm going to put a little bit more cracked pistachio in there because that's too much white card there. And then I'll move on to the spice marmalade. Just fill in the gaps, a few more down there. Fair bit of colour really I'll need on the card. go that will do clean up the mess and next spice marmalade in normal distress ink Spray with water again for beading and then I'm popping it down. Don't overdo it. More up there. I want to keep the other colours so that you can see them but at the same time I do like the effect that this spice marmalade gives me as well. So heat gun, see what that's like and add more if necessary. Got a bit of a kitchen roll here. I'm just going to dab a little bit, get some of that water up. Like so. And then heat it again. That's it, that should do. Heat gun's down, out. So there we are. It just gives it a nice flash of colour. Right, stamping now. Starting off with background. And I'm using the super, super font here, super text of Magic Surrounds Us. I just love this one. And I'm going to stamp it in Chianti. I think that was what I used last time. Let me look. Yep, it's Chianti. First Fine Claire.
I'm not doing this second generation. I'm, I'm really going for it. So off we go with at the top one and then down a bit but keeping over to the right not re-inking and then down again and going left off the uh, cardstock as you can see pressing quite heavily should get right to the bottom without having to re-ink yes and as the bottom really is going to be covered in the uh, in the trees it doesn't really matter but you've i've got a nice swathe of um, this beautiful text going right the way down the card now i'm going to use my misty now because i want to stamp this very big long length um tree which is called fairy fairy start again fairy fir tree <laughs> and uh it's really elegant i just love this tree really elegant but it's um it's quite a long stamp and i want to make sure that the bottom part the trunk doesn't go doesn't become crooked or twisted in any way it's got to be really straight so i'm using my misty popping in the card or the topper make sure that is well down like so and then making sure the stamp is clean. You could pop a bit of acetate down here over the top. A few of my friends do that and I haven't got one beside me. And that is good for positioning your stamp without getting ink on your artwork, just using a sheet of acetate over the top. Then when you've positioned it, of course, and you've picked the stamp up, then you just remove the acetate. but I haven't got one handy, so I'm going to wing it. And this is going to go, I want the branches to just come down from the top. It's about, just about a centimetre down from the top. And it's just over so that the branches of the tree are just off the card. Now, only just off the card so the majority of the tree is there and this crucially is straight fingers crossed that that's okay right let's go for it now this is slippy this mat so i'm taking that out And then popping that down. And pressing, picking it up. And inking up now with Versifying Clear Nocturne. sure I've got all the stamp in place all the ink in place I mean like so bring it down a bit so you can see it and then over we go fingers crossed it will be okay so gentle pressure move over a little bit more Right, okay, so I'm doing that and off. Yeah, that's that's pretty good. I'm really pleased with that. So that's coming out. 
Yes, he's outside, Daisy. My dog is um, whining for Ken, who is out sweeping the front part of the garden path, and she is whining for him. So if she carries on, I'm going to open the door and let her out then. I know who's in charge. <laughs> yes, hold on, Daisy, and I'll let you out, my darling. Right. Now, going back to the same tree, but um, I'm now going to move it to a block. Because this isn't quite as crucial. So I'm popping this on a block and using the lines as a guide so that it will be straight again. But I wasn't as confident in stamping the whole tree because now I'm only going to stamp part of it. Daisy, shush, my sweetie. I'll let. Oh, I'm going to have to let her out, folks. Sorry. Come on in, folks. Okay. Right, she's happy now. <laughs> she idolises him. And she's missing her sister, who we lost a month ago, unfortunately. Right, so now I'm going to re-stamp, re-ink that tree. But I'm just going to, which is the side that I'm looking at, I'm just inking over on this side. And just the foliage, the branches, not bothered about the trunk because it's just going to be part of it. Just check the tree, yeah. Okay. And of course you can leave it in your stamp press and do this if you wish. So just coming down, and it's almost all of it is off the card. And it comes off of the bottom of the card as well. And I think that is about it. So, fingers crossed. You're just getting part of the tree, just peeping through the side. I had an email from a lady as a request to do this. I hope you're watching, Bev. <laughs> and uh, I did this, did teach this card this particular um at a workshop that i did in my local village hall <gasps> those were the days may they come back soon and uh, actually it was um it was really enjoyable so uh, but it took me a while to remember how to do it right i am now totally finished with this one moving on to some more colors first fine claire warm breeze Versa Fine and Claire Monarch. And I will still will be using the uh, Versa Fine and Claire Nocturne as well. Stamp press, uh, sorry, not stamp press, stamp mat, which is here, which I'm going to pop under my work. I'm not so organised today, am I? Yeah, right. I was late today, had so much to do this morning and a nice long walk with Daisy as well, which was very enjoyable, but I'm all behind. Now, the next tree that I'm using is this fairy fir tree now. No, I'm <laughs> I've got to concentrate. Right, this is the fairy fir tree. This is Fairy Fir Tree 2. Mm -hmm. Get it right, Eileen. And the colour that I'm using for this, or colours, is Monarch and Warm Breeze. So I'm starting off with Warm Breeze and I'm just inking up the branches, foliage. With Warm Breeze. Take off the top bit there. And then I'm using Monarch as well. And I'm going to give the top of the branches and down the side of it a little bit of the Monarch colour, which is a purple. Okay. And this 
is um, first generation ink, not stamping any off. Move this up a bit. And I want this to go down the bottom, but some of the branches just to slide across in the trunk of the first fairy fir tree. Pressing down and up. Yeah, that's lovely. And then you're keeping the same tree on the block. Now I'm using Versifying Clear Black. Just inking up the top of the tree and then popping it down, maybe over a little more to the right and popping it down so it's further down and off the card, like so. And then finally, using the same stamp again and inking up in black again, but over to the side and this will go down a little more, I think, but it will be higher than the other one. Different heights all the time make a far better design than all in a line. So down there. Oh, a little tip while I'm, I've got your attention. Well, I hope I have. Um, you know the eraser that I use, the mono, Tombow mono eraser that I use that really gets me out of all sorts of trouble don't use it. Don't try using it on oxide inks. Oh, no. Doesn't work at all. The oxide ink goes, go away. If you try to rub out the uh, the ink, it just takes the rest of the card stop with it. <laughs> so um, that was a lesson that I learned really quickly with this um, demonstration earlier on when I was practicing. Right. Keeping black out, I'm now going to use the birds. It's a lovely stamp, again, Lavinia, of course. On the original card, I used the birds and I stamped them in blue. That was wrong. Doesn't show very well, so I'm going to go for this one in black. Like so. And then just popping it in here. Pressing firmly and then up. That's better. Yeah, I like that much better. Okay. And then I'm just going to do... Now, again, you learn your lesson, don't you? I did a few white blobs. Mm, don't like them either. So I'm going to go for gold blobs on this card. Yes, I'm liking this much better. Right. I know, I'm changing my mind. I do all the time. <laughs> now, I want something to put these gold blobs on with. So, my parchment tools that I never use for parchment. Take one out. Take a bit of cold gold paint. Put it on there, like so. Clean off the parchment tool and then picking some up on the tip then we just have a few gold specks here. One, two, three. Oh, it's not coming out very well. I don't think I stirred the paint very well. So put some more on. Okay, let's try again. Maybe I needed a bigger tip. Mm, I did. Turn it round. Let's try this one. That's better. Get there in the end. Three. Four. Five. And I think the five will do it. Yes, don't need too much of that. It's quite a busy background. Okay. 
So the birds are flying through gold blobs. <laughs> Listen, it's art, okay? <laughs> right, I thoroughly enjoyed making this. I'm just going to do around the outer edge. Thank you for all the lovely comments that you left me yesterday on my YouTube channel. That was so kind of you. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, if you could subscribe to my channel and ring the bell, uh, that will tell you whenever I post a uh, another YouTube, then um, I would be delighted to welcome you. Okay, so last one now. And then I mounted this onto a piece of... I'm going to get my display board. Right, so I've mounted... I'm going to mount this one as well onto a piece of cream cardstock that is half a centimetre all round bigger than the original so that would make it seven by eighteen and a half centimetres and then the um, craft card blank was twenty and a half centimetres by nine and I just pop that on there like so so thank you for joining me today I think I like this card a little better than this one Mainly because this one has got the white blobs and I'm not keen on those. And this has got the gold blobs. I like those much better. <laughs> I'll see you soon. See you next weekend. Bye for now. Have fun and thank you for joining me.